So problem three has something a little special in it, and so you'll be glad that you watched this or listened to this. So I filled in the shorthand for the alleles that came from the mother's chromosome. Of course, the father's chromosome is recessive for all the all three alleles, so I'm not showing that. Um, but one thing you'll notice about problem three is when you look at the data, it doesn't seem like the other problems. And spoiler alert, what's happening in this problem is that one of the genes is actually not really linked. And but if you follow your steps, you'll be able to figure it out. Um, even if you don't recognize that the data looks a little unusual, um, the result that you'll get will tell you that the one of the genes is not linked. But if you kind of sense that the data looks a little different, it's because it does. So what you really have here, if you go ahead and pick your two largest groups, let me see, you would get the 402 and the 403 are your parentals if you chose two of them and then your double crossovers you would choose the 98 well you get the point 98 and 95 and then when you look at them you will see on the double crossovers you have all capitals here, a, big H, big S, big N, and all lowercase down here. So when you look at your parentals, you may notice that the H's are switched. So if you switch this little H on the DCO at the bottom with this big H on the DCO at the top, that would create your two parentals. And so H must be in the middle. And so you're going to rewrite your parental allele combination. Of course, the computer is going to change my alleles. Little s, big H, little n on one of them. And then the other one will be big S, little h, big n. So that's your triple heterozygous mother. And that's her gene order and the layout. So you have segment one and segment two. So for segment one, you're looking for a little s with a little h or a big S and a big H. So this is for segment one. And so you go through your data and that will be the 98, the 102, the 104 and the 95. And that's divided by, I think this is 2000 on this problem. And yes, 2000 and When you convert that to percentage, it's 19.95%. So that one's fine. Now, when you go to segment two, you're looking for a big H with a big N or little h with little n. And so you go back to your data, big H with big N, 98. And then, oh, here it is, 397. And then little h and little n is 399. And 95. And you divide that by 2,000. Now, when you divide that by 2,000, you're going to get a number which is 49.45%. And 
and I put this note in the problem to help you. It says, what does an RF close to 50% really mean? I think you'd agree that 49.45%, we could consider that close to 50%. And when you get a number that close to 50%, 50% means that those genes aren't linked. So what this is telling us is that gene H and gene N are not linked. But we've already shown linkage for S and H, so it just means that N really doesn't belong on this map. So we can do a map of S and H, but we don't include N because N is not linked. So your map would just be S, H, and then you could ind indicate the 19.95 map units between them, but don't put N on the map. So that's what this is. That's what 49.45 is telling you, that, that those two genes are not linked to each other. Since we've already li shown linkage for S and H, we just, just kind of get rid of N. So when you go back to your data, if you remove the N from each of these, because N turns out to be independently assorted, so we wouldn't pay any attention to it, you know, who knows why they thought it was linked, and then the data tells it's not. But when you remove the N, what you'll see is that you really just have four groups. You have the big H, big S allele combination, big H, little s, little H, big S, and little H, little s. And then what you would do would be to add together, for example, you'd add together the 98 and the 102, and you'd have exactly 200 big H, big S. You'd add together the 397 and 402. You'd add together the 403 and the 399. And you'd add together the 104 and the 95. And you'd have four groups of offspring and four, four uh, data points. And then you would still calculate, if you added together the two smallest ones divided by the total, you'd still get 19.95% recombination frequency, but this is just a two-point cross and it's not really a three-point cross because you found out that the gene N is not linked to the other two. And so when the genes are not linked, I mean when you only have two genes, not three, then you're not going to determine coefficient of coincidence and interference because those are measures of double crossovers. You have to calculate expected double crossovers and so on. And since this is only a two-point map, there, there aren't double crossovers measured in this. So that's why you wouldn't determine those calculations. Now you can answer the allele configuration for the female parent. In the female parent, you have S is trans to H. And that's all you would say, because N turns out not to be on the map. So S and H are in trans to each other. And that's all you would say on that, since it's really only a two-gene map.